Okay, well, for those of you who are still having issues, look on with your, with your neighbor while maybe Angie or Mia can help fix your problems. And I just want to basically show you what's inside. We're not going to do anything with it, so this is just a tour. So if we double click on that database, which hopefully has been renamed correctly, um, we're looking at the top level of what's inside of it. And the first thing is a feature data set. Um, which is basically, as I mentioned, it's kind of a folder that uh, groups together things that share some kind of relationship together. So we'll look at that in a second uh, in more detail. You can see there's a table here, um, personal geodatabase table, and tables are, don't, are not spatial. They're just like regular database tables. So, um, and usually the tables are, we keep them in the geodatabase because they're somehow linked uh, to some other thing. So in this case here, right underneath, you can see what we call a relationship class, and it's saying, uh, that this one is named Enclosure Has Barriers. And the idea here is that uh, this table of enclosures, which may represent uh, animal enclosures, uh, has barriers around it. So, um, so somehow these enclosures are fenced in. And maybe we want to map the fences. So for each enclosure that has information about animals, so maybe we have a reptile exhibit, we have uh, you know, three different enclosures. Those enclosures have some kind of fence around it. We want to be able to link that information together, and that's basically what these do. Uh, you can see another relationship enclosure has point of contacts. So we have some contact information associated with that particular animal enclosure, so those, that information can be linked together here. And then there's a bunch more tables out here uh, and a couple more relationship classes. Let's go up to base map feature data set here, and we'll double click on that. And this is really where the meat of the data model is and where most of our uh, actual feature classes are stored. So you can see at the top here, uh, we have area interest. And the icon uh, shows us that it's a polygon uh, feature class. And basically, so this particular feature class stores polygon information, uh, rectangles or whatever other shape you want. Um, and then here's another relationship class that this uh, area of interest may have uh, contact information associated with it. And then we have uh, this different icon here. It's uh, for a line feature class, and this is uh, the barriers feature class. So this would be things like fences and walls uh, and other sorts of barriers that you may have on your property that you want to map. Um, if we go a little bit further down, uh, you'll see bollard, and that has a point icon. This is a point feature class, so it's storing uh, information about what's technically called bollards. I used to always think of them, they're just like those sticks that stick out of the ground, or basically things that block cars going from going where, uh, where people, uh, people go. It's just kind of a separator thing, but they come in all sorts of different forms, uh, and we have the ability to track all these different things in here if you'd like. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? We have uh, the base map topology, and I mentioned uh, before the idea about topology and that it kind of has quality control rules for your data in there uh, for things such as uh, I mentioned before that you know your sidewalk you can't go over your water body or your sidewalk doesn't overlap your grass and that those things should be adjacent to one another but not on top of one another. Um, there's also rules in there for uh, for things uh, like in our in our case we have we may have a mass of plants uh, but we can't have any, uh, we can't have a mass of plants without taxonomy information about that. So there's rules in there that say that that uh, type of information needs to be associated with that mass of plants. So there's lots of different rules in there um, that we'll, we'll look at in a little bit more detail uh, and actually use the topology later. Now let's see, if we go ahead and double click on uh, the area of interest feature class at the top here, it'll open up the properties of this feature class. You'll see on this first page on the general tab here, it has the name of the feature class, what we call the alias, and this is as what it would show up in ArcMap. It's a little bit more descriptive name that you can put spaces in and things like that. Uh, there's a tab for the XY coordinate system that tells us, and you can see here that coordinate system that we selected in our previous steps. There um, is a tab for fields on the far right, and that tab shows us all the different uh, different columns or fields that are inside of the, the table or back uh, or database part of the feature class. So in this particular one, there's an area of interest ID. Uh, we can say what type of area of interest there is. There's a name for it, uh, some date information, a field for uh, linking in any reference documents that you may have on your computer or on the internet, 
uh, an ID to link to some contact information and the ever-present field for comments for anything else that you want to add in there. Now if we click on the subtypes tab at the top, this is uh, where you can find information about what we call subtypes. So this particular feature class, area of interest, has many different subtypes for it. Um, we can have a, an area of interest on our property that may be a construction site, and we want to delineate that construction site. Uh, we can do that. We have what's called a data set extent, which is kind of like you can create an outer bounding box for all of your GIS data, and then anything else that you get in the future, you can clip down to that bounding box so you have a nice, neat area. Uh, maybe you have uh, events regularly on your property. You can define uh, different areas that are used for different events. Uh, if you're having some kind of renovation project, you can delineate that. Uh, if people are doing research out in your collections and maybe they have, uh, they're have they studying the turtles in your pond and you want to be able to delineate that the research is going on there, you can do that in here. And as with most of these things, we always have the ever-present other to capture things that don't fall into any of those categories. And now as you get this data model, you can customize it to uh, your heart's content. So if you want to add different types of area of interest in here, you can do that. Um, and as we develop the documentation for this, we'll have instructions on how to do that stuff. But in the meantime, I can help you do that if you need help. And then there's a tab for relationships here that talk about the, all the different relationships that this participates in. This particular feature class just has a relationship with point of contacts, which is contact information. So you can uh, type in contact information and have that in a different table and then have that linked to the area of interest so that if you have a construction project, you can designate who the point of contact is for that construction project. And that's really all that we need to look at in here. So you can hit OK to close that box. Let's see if there's anything else we want to look at here. Uh, if we scroll down to the P's, we get to P's, you'll see uh, this plant center annotation that has an A icon. And this is uh, what I mentioned earlier, this is a kind of a labeling uh, feature class. So this just stores basically text and leader lines and things that you'd want to have um, for putting the actual labels on your plants. So this is actually set up um, to be uh, related to the plant center feature class so that it actually has the labels for the plants. And we have predefined rules in there that will basically label the plants for you. So when you create a new plant and you fill in the scientific name and you fill in an accession number for it, it will automatically generate a label on the map for you, um, which then you can manipulate, move around, uh, change the appearance of uh, to make it suit your needs. But we've already set this stuff up in here for you. And I think that's just about all that we need to look at in a general tour. Now, there are lots of different feature classes in here, and I could go through describing what each one is, uh, but the, it takes a little bit too much time, but there are basically, we've tried to name them to be relatively self-explanatory, but then there's things that maybe don't make all that much sense, uh, and you to find out more information about them, you can click on them, and then hit the description tab here, and I've tried to fill in a quick blurb on what these things represent, or what, what they're supposed to be used for. Mine doesn't seem to be working at the time here. Does anybody's work? Uh, uh oh, I think I just pissed it off. <laughs> Wait for the hourglass. Wait for it. It should bring up a screen that will have a little bit of text about uh, what's in there. Oh, it started to, but then I clicked off of it. There we go. So at this point, I've just filled in very, very basic information about, about what each one of these things are. I will be expanding this information in the future to make it uh, a little bit uh, more clear. But as you click on these different things, um, there should be information about what these things are. So in this case, we look at plant centers, and it says it's center points for living plants and specimens and botanical collections. That one's kind of self-explanatory. But if we looked at something like a mass planting here, it says that it's a boundary of groups of plants containing one or more specimens. So it's generally things that are groups of plants that you don't want to map as individuals. And these aren't the most, the best descriptions at this point, but uh, I, I do vow that they will be better. So. That's where you can find the best things. If you have any questions about what a particular thing is for, uh, send me an email or give me a call and we'll, uh, we can go from there. 
Okay, so that's basically all we wanted to look at uh, in here for now. So we can go ahead and close out our catalog.